Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new video here on Dungeons and Discussions. This is going to be the first video of this kind that I'm doing, and you can guys can kind of see the shadows here. And I'm doing like a little bit of hand motions, you know. We got some shadows there, but... Uh, today we're going to be doing a uh, different kind of video. I'm going to be showing off my uh, Dungeons and Dragons primarily collection. I don't really... I'm looking into other TTRPGs, but I don't really own the books for them, so... I'm not going to... I'm not going to really go into them, but I do have some stuff from other systems on top of Dungeons and Dragons, but I primarily play Dungeons and Dragons, although I am looking out into branching into a few other games I do want to try out in the near future. So I guess I should start with my uh, D&D books, because they're probably going to be the easiest for me to access. So let me roll over and grab those fast, and we'll go through them one by one and what I got. Okay, so my first book is the, uh, oh, ooh, how am I going to get this in, uh, in frame here? <laughs> Uh, I got a little bit of a thing in the way. Give me a moment. I have the, uh... Oh yeah, it's gonna need to be a little bit taller. My, uh, my player's handbook here. G good old player's handbook. Uh, on top of the player's handbook, I have the... The monster manual. These are all, like, in a order of release here, so... A. These are nothing special, and on top of that, then I got the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, kind of strange here, I'm sorry. Uh, then if I bring this back up... Oof. That pile's starting to get big already. Uh, next is actually something that a lot of people know about. is the uh, Elemental Evil Player's Companion. It's not a very big book, but it is a book nonetheless. And I'm going to slide that in there. Although it is soft cover, I do want to, you know, I don't want to break it. Uh, and then I, this is basically where I take a little bit of a, a leap. Because Horde of the Dragon Queen is the first adventure, but I don't really get that. I don't really like bringing pre-written adventures. But I do have some books that aren't pre-written. I have, next in my collection is the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Which is a thin book, but even though I, 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 it's more um, campaign settings that I don't mind buying. But pre-written adventures, I'm not really a fan of. But Sword Coast Adventures Guide, pretty solid for the Faerunian, um, Faerun setting. So, I'd recommend it. Not for subclasses, though. Although, it was the first big jab at attacking subclasses. But if you do want to, it does have a lot of backgrounds in it. If you want backgrounds, Sword Coast Adventures Guide is the place to get them. Although, it does reference a lot of stuff from the PHB. So, you do need the PHB, which is all the way over here, to understand a lot of the stuff in the Skag. If you, even if you know the uh, SRD rules and stuff like that. Which is like the most basic 5 year rules you could play with. So. Boom. And that is only the first 5 books I have. Although I would, wouldn't really call Elemental Label Player's Companion a book. I call it more of just a few pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. It's like 24 pages long. Okay. I'll grab the next 5 here. Next we have Lolo's Guide to Monsters. This is about the best I could do in showing them off guys. I'm sorry. But uh, Volo's Guide, nice book. Um, can't really say much more about it than that. It does have a lot of races, though. Good for races. And uh, has a pretty, pretty solid bestiary as well. Uh, I don't know if Mordenkind's is bigger, but has a solid bestiary. That I would recommend picking up for a loan. If not for the races already. Um, next book I have in my collection is Xanathar's. I'd recommend this over the Sword Coast any of the week. This is your your player resource book other than the PHB. You want this book. It has some of the best subclasses in the game from Oath of Conquest Paladin to Way of the Drunken Master Monk to... There's even some reprints from Sword Coast Avengers Guide in here of material. And this is starting to get really heavy. Ooh. I like to keep them relatively in order because I'm going to try to put them back on my shelf in the same order. Uh, next book I have, as I'm skipping a lot of a uh, campaigns here is uh Mornkind's Home of Foes. Like I said, I don't know really any I don't own any of the campaigns really, other than the ones that are packaged with a book like uh Ravnica. But uh yeah Mornkind's Tome of Foes, really nice book. Uh I mainly use it for the bestiary, but there is stuff about the the gift. There's a bunch of drow there's a bunch of elf sub races in here, a bunch of teethling sub races. It's a uh, it's a pretty good book all in all, I'd recommend it. For the bestiary alone, I'd recommend it. I recommend any book that isn't a bestiary, especially for Dungeon Masters. And as I was talking about Ravnica just a second ago, here we got Ravnica with our, our boy Niv Mizzet up there, I believe. 
Uh, I played Campaign Ravnica, that's the reason why I picked it up. It's a, it's, it's a pretty good book, it adds some races, so even if you're not looking into playing it for the Ravnica setting, it does add some races. It has a small little campaign too. It's an all in all solid book, although I'm not really a magic fan. Also it's a few backgrounds for some magic stuff for the Guild of Ravnica. So Ravnica is a nice book, I'd pick it up if I were you. Uh, really heavy pile, but I'm keeping them in order. Next book I have, and I believe these are all in release order, is Aquisitions Incorporated. Now, Ack Inc. is a strange one, because it doesn't really fall, like, even the art style is different than that of, like, the PHB. You could just tell, like, that, that, that's, that giant right there is really different from just, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just very, very different style of book. It's not a bad book. Nice book. It's all about running a business and stuff within Dungeons and Dragons, from what I understand. I mainly used it because I played a Verdan, and I got it on sale. So, I want to play a Verdan, I saw it on sale. I was like, yo. So... That, that's that. Shook. And then I only got three more books, actually. With, uh, well, they are official books. We'll get into unofficial books in a, a second. So, the next three books I have are uh, Eberron. Eberron's a nice little setting. Um, I pick up Eberron for the races itself. That's mainly why I picked it up. But um, I don't really know quite a lot about the Eberron setting, though I do want to potentially run it one of these days because I do have a people that are potentially looking into running Eberron or wanting to run a uh, play an Eberron game because they haven't before so uh yeah but Eberron's some really cool races like the Warforged, the Shifters, the Clash, Tar. I would recommend picking it up just for the races um and the Dragon Marks are pretty cool oh and the Artificers in this book so I grab it up for the Artificer that's a pretty pretty neat one so let me just add that to <laughs> boom okay cool our next book I got is Wild Mount now, I'm not really a fan of Critical Role, but I will mount that. Wild Mount's a pretty good book. I love Wild Mount's Bestiary. I got the the Frostworm is a pretty neat. I want to run that one in my game sometime in the future. That's particularly one of the things about this book I really like is just the Frostworm. <laughs> For whatever reason, it really draws me in. Maybe it's because I'm a Tremors fan and uh, Tremors Six is a uh, cold day in hell, and Tremors Seven is about to come out in like six days from me recording this. Which I don't know if I'm going to watch it right on release because I don't even have a DVD player anymore and I haven't ordered it or anything. So I had to figure out what services it's available on. So, uh, yeah, but, um, Spores at the Wild Mount. Nice book. Uh, Echo Knight's also a, sub a subclass from this book. I'd pick it up just for Echo Knight and for the Beast Jerry, so. Nice one. Uh, don't know if I ever run a Wild Mount game, though. And, ooh, this is getting heavy. Okay, and the final book that I have that's an official book that's currently out is Mythagossi the Theros. Now, uh, Theros is another magic setting. I'm playing a Theros game. I love it. I'm playing Oath of Conquest Triton Paladin. Uh, this is the book that Tritons get Dark Vision in. Or is it Cold Resistance? I forget which one. I think it's something like that. I think they get Dark Vision in this book. Because they're at the bottom of the ocean. The Glyphs are the ones that are in Icewind Dale that get um, Cold Resistance. That's what it is. I either way, uh, Mythagossi the Theros is a great book. I love the Hydras in it. I love the Giants in it. Um, I'd recommend to anybody that's willing to uh, play some that wants to play another magic setting. We're supposed to be getting a new one in the future, I believe, a new magic setting. Ooh, okay. Let me just. Okay. Put the books over there. Okay, the books are about halfway up my monitor right now, but that's not the end of the books. Uh, I guess what I should firstly just kind of do before I go on to the books is because I have this on the same shelf as my. Official books. Oopsies, I dropped it. So I have this on the same shelf as my official books. It's literally just a chalice. Um, I got it for like five dollars just to fool around with that D and D game. Never had to use it as a quarantine, but it exists. I don't really know how to show this off, especially with where my camera's sitting. I can't kind of sideways on my. I guess I can kind of like maybe do that. It's still not very good of a view, but yeah, chalice. I'll put this back though. As you can see, I'm pulling around with more books. Um, what I also like to use when I run my games in particular, and I got them recently, is the Monster Manual Expanded. It's a very, very great supplement. Compared to the actual Monster Manual, it's also humongous. <laughs> like, uh, like look at that, look at that size comparison. Let me just uh, do that. It's, it's humongous. It's also a little bit bigger, as you can see. If I kind of line them up. 
exactly and push these back as far as possible you can see you have a little bit more extra room on the monster manual so it's a little bit taller so it doesn't fit on the same shelf for just because of the height difference but uh it's it's a nice book and then on top of the monster manual one or monster manual expanded one i got the monster manual expanded two even more monsters and it includes uh variants of volos and morning monsters so hey okay so it's actually starting it's like three-fourths of my monitor now uh and I recently picked this up as well, uh, because I'm thinking about writing the Eberron setting. Is the uh, Exploring Eberron book by Keith Baker, the inventor of Eberron, I guess is the best way to put it. The creator of Eberron, so. Bought this up, might run it, not quite sure yet. But if I do Eberron, I'm going to definitely take some inspiration from this book, because this adds on a ton of information to Eberron. Uh, because Eberron's a pretty cool setting, I haven't had a chance to look into it or run it, so. I do want to potentially run Eberron, but I have to read through both books in that case. I didn't know this had this had like shifters cant and stuff for uh what are they called changelings pretty cool or is it maybe it's called changeling cant i can't remember just shifters are the ones that are turned into animals okay and we're not gonna be able to surpass my monitor's height sadly but we have two other books i got this one very recently although it's been out for quite quite some time is xanthar's uh lost notes everything and i should mention everything from the monster manual expanded one past that has not been official this is somewhat more official Whereas if, um, let's just say if, like, uh, how do I put this? If Dungeon, you have D&D is the first party, and second party is you the consumer, and third party is, like, other companies, this is, like, one and a half party, because it's made by some of the people that worked on Xanthar's Guide to Everything. It's basically stuff that didn't get into Xanthar's that could have been into Xanthar's. Although I believe some of them have been revised in UAs later, and then are some of them are probably going to be put in Tasha's, uh, particularly the Rune Knight. But, uh, this is a pretty, pretty good, good book. Nice subclass options. Uh, your DM might say they aren't allowed though because they aren't official, but normally if they get a few amount of DMs guild, they have the, the more golden ampersand. That means they are by, made by guild adepts. It actually says it on the, uh, the side. I can show it. Guild adepts. Oh. Yeah. Dungeon Masters Guild adepts. So if it says made by adepts, it's a little bit more official. It's like semi-official. And then the last one is kind of in the same uh, boat. It is the uh, Gem Dragons of Faerun, although it's really just Gem Dragons in general. And though, I don't know why Cobalt Press is not, are not guild adepts, but uh, this adds in some Gem Dragons from into 5th edition. So we have the Chromatic, we have the Metallic, and then we got some Gem Dragons. Gem Dragons are really nice. I, uh, I enjoy them. Uh, I wanted to run them quite a few times in my games, and they just don't exist other than the Adult Sapphire Dragon, which we got in 2019. This is a very different adult sapphire dragon though in it. Okay, and I don't want to like show off what's the material of the books in case you haven't bought them or something like that. I'm not sure where the uh, YouTube draws the line on that. Okay, cool. So with my, my pile of books that's quite tall, uh, I would give you an angle for my camera, but I'm not that good at trigonometry or geometry in that case. So let's take a step back. Okay. So now I'm going to go over my dice collection. My dice collection isn't anywhere near as big as my book collection, but here we go so um this is just a bag that i have sitting around i got for my first dice set most of the dice in that set in this bag aren't even um official but I, what i do is i put my dice per whatever in plastic bag especially in this is what it kind of got me started doing that because i want to have them all mixed up but this is just a bag of random d6 and a little uh sandwich bag um <laughs> you have you really really uh whatever about it these these did have a they did come with packets but uh the packets all basically fell apart and i gave one of them away that one was still in good condition because some guy needed a packet for his dice so that's what happened but yeah this these came from like three different sets so these are um these two are chonk d6 i call them uh they are actually glow in the dark if i turn off the light oh they're supposed to glow in the dark they kind of glow a little bit so I probably need to charge them up with like UV but plus my monitors are here which gave off a little bit of extra light you wouldn't have saw normally and then I don't have no clue where this D6 came from but um I have it so I use it I normally use it when I have to roll a D6 or something special although I haven't really got to roll my D6 in a long time and I just got 10 of these random like you know D6 at a store at one point in time at a dollar store because I needed uh, quite a few D6 for whatever reason. I don't remember why I needed the D6. Okay, cool. 
And I don't remember what company made these dice, but um, this were, these were my first uh, five sets of dice I got all together. So as you can see, there's nothing really amazing about them. Uh, yellow, purple, uh, blue, red, and green. Um, yeah, but I put them all in sandwich bags because they don't have their whatever bags anymore. Which, yeah, it put me into the ever long lasting um, cycle of uh, putting every new set of dice I get that aren't separated by some sort of bag into a bag just so I can use sets. And I might uh, end up start separating instead of by a set, by, um, whatchamacallit, by dice class. Which would actually end up doing more in this bag, but in my other bag, which is like about to explode, it would actually be more efficient. Um, after that, though, I quickly uh, wanted to get an actual nice set of dice, which are probably going to hurt my desk if I roll them. So I might not roll them, but... Uh, oh, well, I already rolled one accent. Uh, I got a nice set of Hacks Tex Mel dice, if that's how you pronounce the company name. Uh, I do enjoy myself some uh, Hax Tex dice. They're nice. They're nice and chilly because my basement's a little chilly right now, which is where I am. But um, yeah, uh, I do like some Hax Tex Mel dice with a nice little uh, leather bag. So I give them a good review. I'm recording this on Prime Day, and some of their dice are on d discount right now. Although I'm not gonna buy any because I have too many dice. <laughs> um. This is from uh, Bethscon, I believe. I didn't buy this myself. I got it as a Secret Santa gift. Bethscon dice. And it's not even a set. It's just one D100. Uh, sure, let's roll it. A D100 is not fair, by the way, but let's roll it to see what we get. I have to, like, try to stop it here. We got exactly a 50, guys. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm going to try to bring it over to you guys. And that is 50 right there on top. So, hey, we got a 50. Which means this video has a 50-50 chance of success. And 50-50 like-dislike ratio. Let's actually not make that the truth. Let's uh, let's all put a like in this video, subscribe, because um, this is a very, very new kind of content. And if you want me to keep on doing stuff like this, maybe show my favorite parts of the books or something like that, I'll, I'll do that. And now finally, Chonk Bag. This is like the, uh, the grand whatever of my collection. Um, this is Kume. Um, Kume is, you know, a dice producing company. Uh, it's a set of 20s, 140 pieces. Uh, you can get off Amazon for like $25, I think. Um, but I'll go through it. I'll show off every set, I guess. Painfully. Um, okay, we got like a red and black set. Nothing quite different from the uh, set in my um, my first set of dice. We also got this purple and white set. I can show off right there. Uh, I don't want to take them out of the bags because, you know, it's going to take forever if I take everything out of the bags. It's going to take forever for me to be back up. Okay. We got this nice purple and bluish kind of set of dice. I really like them. Okay. Um, we got a nice black and blue set of dice. More of like a... I don't want to say cyberpunk, but kind of like a... Yeah, it kind of can be like a technologic kind of thing, you could say. Okay. Um... This is another set of blue, but this is with orange instead of purple. I, I like them as well, but I just because I like the purples. This is a set of black and um, black and yellow, I guess. I, I like them indeed. Okay, let's keep on digging into this bag. My least favorite ones are at the bottom, because I don't use them as often. Okay, uh, white and gold, good paladin dice set. Um, oh, these are like a nice fire set. I'm not sure what, I, what I'll use them for. I used to normally use them. I had a flaming sword, uh, not flame tongue, it was just a homebrew flaming sword. I used them when I was ever rolling, whenever I was rolling for that. Actually, I used the chonk dice for the, it was a great sword, but uh, I used this for the, the fire part of it. It was an extra d6 for fire. Uh, just like a magical blue dice, use them on whatever you want to. I don't quite know what I would use those on, to be honest. But they, they do have some glitter in them, so. I believe it's glitter, at least. Um, this is just a normal green set like the one I have in my uh, first dice set. Uh, these are weird black and yellow, but like yellow dice, black ink. Not sure if I'm an amazing fan of them. Um, and we got green and blue. D like it just as much as my, actually I don't know why it's so bad on the bottom, but 
like it just as much as my purple and blue and my orange and blue. Uh, here's like a just another blue. Blue dice are always nice. Um, got like some some turquoise dice here. Although it's looking like blue on the camera, but I can guarantee you it is turquoise. And you bring it closer. That's not why I'm picking up on it, but it's more like a turquoise. It's more of a green than a blue. Maybe it's just not showing up good in OBS. My dice tower is starting to fall over. Uh, just normal green and yellow. Nice set of dice. Uh, purple yellow. Normal nice set of dice. Um, this is a uh, weird brownish kind of colored dice. Okay with it. Um, another weirdish brownish yellow colored dice. I'm never going to use it. Probably. Uh, and this one just looks like pure snot, I believe that's the last one, and there's one more in the set, but, uh, yeah, it just looks pure, like, pure snot. Don't really like it. And, um, don't really know what these are. I would say maybe, like, a red orange-ish. Uh, I don't really know what I, you have to play, like, a, a really bloody character of using these for characters. I don't quite know what I'd even use these on. It had to be, like, some sort of, like, uh, magic without that, specifically that tinge of color for it to use on any sort of magic class, because I, I just don't know what I'd use that on. I also have no clue. Anyways, that is my whole entire collection. As you can see here, I, if I were to move my webcam up a little bit, I got quite, I had quite a bit there. Uh, I'm not sure if Adam's edited this or if I'm gonna edit this, but you know, be pretty, pretty neat for whoever does. So, I think we're gonna end here for this time, guys. Until next time, good ass nice ciao. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. And until then, good ass ciao. Bye, guys. Because I do the intro twice here.